Often digital pathology is associated with a total change in the pathology workflow and investment in expensive equipment. And sometimes that's the case, but it doesn't have to be. It's not the only way of doing digital pathology. And in this video, I'm going to tell you about three different ways of doing digital pathology and how you can start today. Hi. I'm Alexandra Zhurev and I'm here to help you do better digital pathology. If you're looking to start or step up your digital pathology journey this year, be sure to subscribe, click the bell below and be notified every time I release a new video. I sometimes hear from my digital pathology trailblazers that they would love to go digital. They would love to start doing digital pathology, but it's still a dream because it's associated with a big workflow change and it has to be done in the whole institution at once. And often it does, but as an individual, you can start doing digital pathology today. I'm going to show you three different scenarios that you can use to start doing digital pathology. And depending where you are in your digital pathology journey, you can pick the best one. And for each of the ways, I'm going to be showing examples, partners that are working with the digital pathology place that do offer this type of service or product. So let's dive into it. Way number one, take static pictures. If you're ready to start right now, your institution is not planning to go digital or the digital workflow is kind of outside of your workflow, you can start with taking static pictures and you can start doing diagnostic images very simply without any workflow disruptions. You can start immediately with your phone without any additional equipment. You can use this phone adapter or you can use a microscope camera. I do not have the patience to hold my phone in front of the microscope, so I'm not going to be talking about this option. I know there are people who do it very, very well. I'm not one of them. I actually need help. I use a phone case and microscope adapter and a microscope camera. So let me show you what I have. So here we are in my pathologist cockpit that also has a microscope and a camera and I have my phone in the case already. So before I show you the components of the case, let me take it out and show you how miserable I was before I had this case. So here are our slides. I actually got them on Amazon. So if you want a set of histology human tissue slides, you can get them on Amazon and I'm going to have an affiliate link in the description below. We can use a skin section. So what you would normally do, you put the camera on and you try to find it and you have to be still. As you can see, this image is appearing, but I cannot be still for one second. Not even to take this picture. I don't know how I used to do it. So that's why I got myself the scoped micro case and I'm an affiliate for this one as well. And you're going to have the link below in the description. So this case has a couple of components. First, the case, then this little disc, and then the eyepiece adapter. So what you do first, you put your camera in the case. Then you put this disc into those holes, align them, and they slide in. And what you do then, you put this eyepiece adapter onto here. Now we have something that replaces our eyepiece. So we take the eyepiece out, put it in the ocular. We can change magnification, adjust the focus, take a picture, zoom in, and take our diagnostic pictures like that super fast. But if you want something more than a phone, I have this camera. This is the one that I have tested and I'm using, and I'm going to link to a video about this very camera, like a full tutorial. This is the Path 4K, 4K camera with streaming options, a fantastic software in focus. So I'm going to show you how it looks with the camera. So here we are in the in focus software and we have our camera list, Path 4K, and there we have our live view. Let's go to a lower magnification. So you will see everything I see. You can take a picture by doing snap. You can record what I'm seeing here. If I want to move around, change the magnification, show you different things. We can adjust the white balance here with our region of interest on the white place. And then we have the real life colors. This thing is like Mercedes in the microscope camera world. I have tested different ones. The ones that you put into the ocular, others that you put on the C-mount. This is something that is really high quality and there is a discount if you decide to go with this one. I'm going to link it in the description. Be sure to stay till the end because the third way will probably surprise you. Second way, 
get a scanner. This is the most known way of doing digital pathology using whole slide scanners to generate whole slide images. These images, unlike the static images that you only have one frame, only the field of view that you're seeing under the microscope, here you have the whole slide scanned and you can zoom in and zoom out and have the digital microscope experience. So if you wanted that, you will need to get a scanner. And I'm gonna link to resources how to get the best scanner. If this is where you are in your journey, be sure to get that resource. In addition, there is a separate video about how to choose a scanner. But if you do need whole slide images and you will be doing this consistently in your lab all the time, you just need this equipment and there is no way around it and you need to get a scanner. The partners of Digital Pathology Place that offer scanners are Hamamatsu, which is a scanner for anatomic pathology, and Bionovation. They have a scanner for cytology. So depending what your needs are, anatomic pathology, our partner is Hamamatsu, big shout out to them. And for cytology, our partner is Bionovation and a big shout out to them as well. And if you want to learn more about what they offer, be sure to click the logos on the Digital Pathology website and you will be redirected to their page. Third way, have somebody else do it for you. What do I mean by have somebody else do it for you? This is a relatively new way of doing digital pathology called digital pathology as a service. So if you have a big archive of slides to be digitized, or if there is a project needs to be digitized, pretty big, but you don't want your own scanner. You don't want to dedicate personnel and take them away from what they're doing right now or hire new people to handle those scanners and to scan those slides. This third option might be for you. And digital pathology place partner that offers this type of service is Pramana. Pramana offers both the equipment and the personnel to help you digitize large amounts of slides. So if you have uh, some archiving project, if there is a big joint project where many slides have to be digitized, they can help you out with that. And you can check their offer in detail on the Digital Pathology Place website as well. So these are the three ways in which digital pathology can be done. Way number two, the scanners, everybody knows about it. But before we wrap it up, I want to point out out that with way number one, you can start immediately right now. And even if you think, oh, well, this is not really digital pathology, taking pictures with your phone. The moment you start doing it, the moment you start doing it consistently for teaching, for other purposes, you are gonna start your digital pathology journey and you will be doing digital pathology and then other digital pathology doors will open for you. And the third way is pretty modern. Outsourcing digital pathology for those massive projects. Something to consider if you wanted to take part in those digitization projects like Big Picture or other type of private public consortium where you wanted to contribute slides but you didn't have the resources, this would be something to consider. So be sure to check whatever works for you and I talk to you in the next episode.